There's a lot of debate following the successful case launched by the GMB against Uber in defining who's self-employed, who's a worker. As far as I'm concerned, I work for Uber. You have an app on your phone, and when you switch on that app, it then allocates jobs to you on the basis that you are the nearest person to that job. You go to the pickup point, you then switch to another part of the app which tells you where the passenger is going. You proceed along the journey, and when you reach the destination, you switch off the job, and the job is complete. And then you await a new job. The card of the passenger is charged in the Netherlands. The commission is taken from that driver and they receive the balance at the end of the working week. The key issue for the Uber drivers is the money. The money is too low. Uber drivers are being paid less than minimum wage now. We've got a situation where both private hire and taxi drivers are committing suicide, losing homes, losing cars, families are breaking up because they're not making enough money. So originally when I started Uber, the rates was, it wasn't great, but it was okay. You could make a living out of it. And all of a sudden they decided to lower the rates. We have no choice in setting the rates, none at all. It's a disgusting way of doing it because we're the drivers and we're the ones who do all the work and they never, they never uh, consult us in, in, doing, in doing the rates. As rates are dropped, drivers are having to work longer and longer hours. I think that is dangerous. I think that is crazy. And I think that is unhealthy for the passenger and for the driver. In terms of the percentage taken by Uber of my earnings, they take 20%. And Uber's got that Uber pool, they're right sharing that. Uber takes 35% of that fare. Reduce it to 10%. You are a company valued at $62 billion. The other part is getting a vehicle. Now you have to get in London a vehicle that's below a certain age. My vehicle cost in excess of £10,000. That vehicle has also got to be licensed by Transport for London so that it can carry passengers. You've got to pay for the driving license, the TFN license, which together is about £500-£600. I've got to do that my running of my car, my clothes which I wear, which I've got to dry clean, and the fuel insurance, MOTs, cleaning the vehicle, tax, national insurance, subsistence during the day, parking fees, mobile phone bills. Wear and tear, accidents, I reckon I'm doing about five pounds an hour. I don't get no holiday pay, sick pays or any pension, not, not at all, unless I save up for it. And which out of what the wages I'm getting of Uber, I can't seem to save up nothing at all. Uber has a huge degree of control over the driver in terms of the information that the device gives back to Uber. It tells Uber where you are, when you're working, when you're resting, how fast you're driving, how much acceleration you're using, how much brakes you're using. There's a whole myriad of data that is fed back to Uber. Being self-employed, as I've been in my, all throughout my life, knows I, there's no one who can deactivate you or tell you when to go to work or not. But Uber can, because all they do, they deactivate you and then you cannot do nothing at all. If you refuse two jobs in succession, Uber switches you off the device. That, that is a fact, it's happened to me. You are doing something and you can't touch the device and you find that you've missed two jobs in, in a row and you're off. If someone complains about it after you've done the job, they, take the, they deduct the money from you. So a passenger could claim the driver had gone in an obscure route or the journey's taken longer and it's almost like a kangaroo court because there's no appeal. In the last week I've had a driver from Uber Eats who advised me that it's not uncommon if people don't push to confirm they've actually received the meal that they then claim that the driver hasn't delivered the meal and they then not only get a refund but then they get a, a, a free meal. The rating system is based upon how the passenger um, rates you for a variety of things. The cleanliness of your car, your courtesy, your professionalism, your driving and an, a myriad of, of things that Uber monitors. Now you have no feedback in relation to that. They've never called me in because I've never had low ratings but I've had ratings where they sent me an email threatening to deactivate me. So I had to write to them, I said, why is it that we're doing such a good job and one and two people will make a comment and you have this ratings run out like a sword. 
you know, to go off our head. I know of one individual who is unable to work. He has spent something like £20,000 purchasing a vehicle. A client has made a serious allegation against him, which was referred to the police. The police exonerated him, but Uber have kept him off the system. The imposition of the English language test has not been thought through because it's going to apply to each and every driver who is a private hire driver in London. A test which costs the driver over £300 plus the time they need to take out to inform the test, plus the fact they're being searched um, when they're going in. Have I got a problem with English? You know, I've been driving for a long time. I don't think they should. I think they should have done that right from the beginning if they were going to do something. They should have something different instead of the English language test. In Uber's renewal of the transport licence, when it goes to Transport for London, I think a number of things have to happen. One of those things, it, it has to uh, develop and clarify the status of people such as myself, i.e. the drivers. We're providing work and it must be clear how much we're getting in return. Transport for London plays a significant role in the earnings of black cabs and they should play that role now that they have responsibility for minicabs. Uber is a private hire company. If they're a tech company, then they wouldn't have the licenses. Uber has 30,000 drivers signed up, but outside of that, I understand that the licenses issued to drivers by Transport for London has increased from 60,000 to about 100,000 plus. That is clearly too much. What we have found Uber doing is being a little less than socially acceptable by allowing drivers to be licensed in London and maybe driving up in Leeds or Manchester or uh, other locations around the country with a London badge, which is not particularly fair on local drivers. It's not keeping it local. To make things equal across the piece for large companies like Uber and small minicab companies is you say, look, this is the minimum fare that you can charge per mile or per hour so that it levels things out. Uber is using us as a sword to defeat the minicabs and to defeat the black cabs. The English test, let's grab the English test one for a start. Now they're going to be putting in, putting in a test for driving. We think that could potentially be folded into that. We think that can be accomplished in a simple, maybe 30 pounds oral test. Make sure we get our holiday pay and our pensions and all everything that comes with it. As I said, I've been doing them three and a half years. And I think I'm, I'm worse off than when, when I first started. As automation is increasing in pace, more and more roles are going to be similar to that of Uber and Deliveroo and so on. We're going to be asking every MP to, to back a private member's bill and if that goes according to plan then we can maybe change the legislation that we have. I joined the GMB for us to see if we can go further ahead, with, you know, to see what we can do about Uber. We're seeing a huge increase in membership as time is going on. I have always joined unions in the places where I've worked. It's taken me a couple of years to think about joining the GMB, but the key point was the way that they took up and fought the, um, the case of the drivers seeking the status of uh, being paid the minimum wage. So that, for me, showed that the GMB was ready to fight. Frankly, if, if there's nobody speaking on your behalf, you're just a lone voice. When you're a union, you're working with others.